Hello and welcome to this video where we look at how to combine files with different headers. This is a really common question that I get in my training courses and on my YouTube channel. So we are going to cover two examples of how to do this. In example one, the header names will be different, but the order of the columns is the same. And in example two, we will tackle both problems where the header names are different and they are in a different order in the table also. Let's get started. So in a folder appropriately named Excel files, I have three Excel workbooks, Africa, Australia and Europe. And this is what they look like. You can see that in the Africa workbook, there is a header named membership where that same header is named level in the Australia and Europe workbooks. So we are in Excel and let's combine those files. I'll click on data, get data, and we'll use a local or network folder here as opposed to a SharePoint folder or other folder on a cloud service. And I'm going to connect to this Excel files folder. Here are the files. Let's click transform data as one should. And then once they're loaded into the Power Query editor, I'll click on the combine files button to combine them. We are presented with the combine files window. There's only one sheet in these simple workbooks. And we're going to use the first file as the sample file as it ultimately doesn't really matter which file we use in the approach that we are going to take. I'll click OK, and that will combine those files quite happily. But we can see in the results that the membership column, which it's using because Africa, the workbook that used that header, was the first file in that folder and was therefore used as the sample file. And we've got null values because Australia and Europe did not use that header in their tables. Now, ultimately, the magic behind combining files with different headers is the ability to detach the header row from the tables and then provide a method of renaming those headers, either by adding a rename step and renaming them itself, or potentially extracting headers from a specific file and appending that header row to the other files. So let's start the approach of detaching this header row. In the queries on the left hand side, I've got this current query called Excel files using the name of the folder the files were imported from. But I'm going to go to the transform sample file. This query is applied to every file within that folder. So this really is the magic file that Power Query provides for any transformations that you want to perform on every file that is combined. This is the one you make those changes to. And we can see in here that we have the header membership. And just to provide some clarity as to why, if I click on the sample file in the queries pane, we can see it's using the Africa workbook because that was the first one in the folder which we did ask it to use. Back to transform sample file and to detach the header row over in the applied steps pane, I'm going to delete the step called promoted headers. So that now that header row becomes the first row of our table. And then I'm going to use the remove rows button on the home tab to remove the top row. In a window, it will ask me how many rows I just want one from the top, the former header row, and I'll click OK and it's gone. And although the sample file is Africa, please bear in mind this is happening to every file within that folder that we are combining. And this is the moment that you would then apply the headers that you want. And there are a few different approaches to doing that. This approach is simply to rename them ourselves. So I'm going to call the first header date, I'm going to rename the second header simply as name. And the last one, I'm going to name it level. Now we could name this whatever we want. It doesn't have to be named level or membership. 
as is the case in the workbooks, because this is now taking over and those headers will be used by all files. I'll confirm that and go back to the Excel files query where I'm getting a warning, which for those of you who've used Power Query for more than five minutes, will I'm sure have seen before, which is a step level error saying it cannot find one of the column headers. And in this example, it's been caused by the change type step, which I'm simply going to remove. And here we have our results. I can see the headers are named date, name and level, and everything is working splendidly. At this point, we can continue with further transformations and load them into Excel. That is our first example and definitely the simplest way of handling different headers when combining files. For our second example, I've got the three workbooks again, Africa, Australia and Europe, this time in a folder called Excel Files Order. We have the same problem with the different header names as the Africa workbook is still using the membership text. However, in addition to that this time, we have an issue that the Europe workbook has the full name and level columns in a different order to the other two. So we cannot take the approach of our first example because that was relying on the columns being in the same position. So we're in Excel, let's click data, get data and from folder and we'll combine the files from the Excel files order folder. Once again, transforming the data and then combining these files, specifying that first sheet and that the first file, therefore Africa in this example, will be used as a sample file. So this is what we have, the same issue with the null values for the Australia and Europe workbooks. And once again, we'll pop over to the transform sample file query. But this time we can't take the approach of just detaching the headers and renaming them as before because the columns are in a different order. So this time we'll keep the promoted headers step and we're going to add a new blank step by clicking the small add step icon beside the formula bar, similar to how you may have started a function in Excel before. And that will start by adding a reference to the previous step, which was promoted headers. Within the formula bar, I'm going to add a table.renameColumns function, open up the bracket, and we'll see that it prompts us for some arguments, which are to provide it with the table, and that will be that previous table or previous step of promoted headers. And then we can provide the renaming as a list. I'll click the other side of that table argument and put in my comma. And to provide the list, we will open up a set of curly braces. And at this point, what's very interesting, it mentions that we can provide a missing field argument as well. Now this is important because when we provide the renaming, such as rename the membership header to level, it's not going to find the membership header in all of our tables, all of our files. So we want to be able to say to this function, if you don't find it, that's okay. Just continue with the process and don't throw up an error. Now we're actually gonna provide a list of lists in our renaming here. So within those curly braces, I'm going to open up another set and I'm going to ask it to rename the membership header. I'll put in my comma as level. Using the double quotes around this to specify literals and they're always displayed in this red font. And then outside that set of curly braces, but within the outer set, the outer list, I'll put in another comma so that I can provide another list of renaming. Now in this example, that's the only list we need. I want to imagine a scenario where maybe in the past, when using this combined files, another header was used. And I want to protect our query against that. Let's imagine that somebody called it TL once before. So within another set of curly braces, 
And isn't it wonderful, by the way, that Power Query adds that closing brace or that closing double quotes when we type the literals. I'm going to name this one tier and then comma and it will be called level. So if you see a header name membership, change it to level. If it's called tier, change it to level. And then if I move to outside the outer set of braces, I'll put in a comma so that now I'm on that missing field argument. And we can type missing field and choose the option for ignore. So if you do not see a header named tier or a header named membership, just ignore it. Close off the bracket, I'll press enter to confirm. And if I pop over to the Excel files order query, we have that warning, which is all due to that change type, which we could have removed before doing that, but it's really not significant. What is important right now is we have solved the issue. You can see that the header of that last column is level. And it works even though those columns are in a different order and have different header names. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe so that you will receive the latest Excel and Power BI videos released at this channel. Take care. I'll see you again soon.